Hi everyone, I hope you're all having an amazing week. If you're new here, my name is Danny James and on this channel I make content around music video editing and today I'll be sharing some of the popular drill video stroke trap video effects and how you can pull them off. Thank you for your support so far, we are almost hitting our first thousand subscribers. So if you do end up enjoying the video, kindly give it a thumbs up and without further ado, let's jump right into it. We are on Adobe Premiere and right now we are on a timeline. I have prepped a couple of clips which we shall be using to demonstrate a couple of effects that we shall be learning. The first effect that I'll be showing you is how to work with a beat drop. Whenever the beat drops is whereby you can play around with some footage that is in your video. I want to show you how to do a quick photo burst. I'll take uh, for example this music video. If you have a full music video, let's say you have a bunch of footage, what you can just do, just pick an in and out and then just drop it there. So I'll take this video and then I'll grab a couple of screenshots real quick. So let's take about 10 screenshots like this one. Uh, there's this little camera right here. It's an icon for exporting frame. If you cannot find it, just come to this button editor. It should be right under here. So we just take a screenshot and then send it to our desktop. Uh, let's name it S001. I'll keep on taking other screenshots within this video. So we've taken a couple of screenshots which we shall use. We've deleted the video that we were using to take these screenshots. So I'll introduce some audio so that you can use it to follow along. I'll just drop this audio, it's where the beat starts. So let's play it. From around this part to this part is whereby I want us to play with these. I'll bring the other photos, they are right on my desktop, and then I'll drag them into my timeline. But I'll place them on the bins, and then I'll create a small bin, and I'll cut them shots. I'll enlarge these and put all the photos here. So I've taken about 8 photos, I'll drag all of them into my timeline. And also we need them to uh, occupy a really small chunk, so I'll just cut it like that, and do the same for the rest. So here's a couple of photos, let's play with the music and see what it looks like. So I'll also put some video footage so that we have something to look forward to before. Yeah, I'll drop some video right beneath here. And then let's play now. Yeah, so we'll need to have these clips, these images, about 5 frames. So you can hold shift from where the clip starts and then that's 5 frames. So we need to make all of them super small. Let's just play and see if it really works. Yeah, so that's perfect. So I let this music video run. I want these images to come before. So let's play it. Yeah, so that's a really easy way that you can have photos, just take some screenshots and then run them over. Also, if you want to make these a little bit better, you can just highlight on all of them and then you can nest these. Okay, so let me just cut the video footage that is beneath and then you can bring an overlay, uh, a simple overlay. Let me just show you what I mean. So here's an example of an overlay that I'm talking about. Something like this. So I'll bring it into my timeline and then pick an in and out. I will place it right on top of this. We can have this since it goes for a short amount of time. I'll increase the speed. So I'll use my rate stretch tool to compress it so that it appears more often. And then I'll go to my effect controls, change the blending mode to screen. And then on this nested sequence, I will also add a scaling property. I'll begin at 100 and then you shall zoom in at about 110. So let's see what it looks like. Yeah, so that's that's really dope and even if it appeared twice, you could you can notice the difference. So let me play it for the last time.
okay so using the same bit i'll show you one of the other things that you can do in a bit drop i just want us to introduce some blank cuts let me just bring in a video footage okay so i have a bunch of raw footage here which i'll use for this so let's say we in we are in our intro part of the song before the beat drops so as this beat drops what i would ideally do i'd switch in between this different footage so let me cut right here right here about let's say some some space in between and then i'll also do the same for this other footage let me label these clips so that you can know what it is and let me give this one a different shade so ideally what i will do i'll bring this clip here and then bring a different clip here so we'll delete these two and then maybe bring this clip once again and then let this clip roll and then bring this other one here and then you'll have this one and then this one so this is excess let's just remove it so we'd have the video running like this let's make sure all of them are scaled to frame size okay so Whenever the beat starts, it's important to stay a bit chill and then show a few scenes from the set slowly while leaving some blank spaces. So we'll start with the first clip right here. And then we'll rest it and then put another clip. We are just intentionally leaving some blank spaces. And then ideally what I will do, I'll put cross dissolve on all of them. So I'd highlight on all of them, hit Ctrl D, put a cross dissolve so that they appear slowly and also exit slowly. So let's look at it. Of course you have to also listen to the beat and match with it. So let's start everything right here. This is where the beat starts pacing. So this one came on too soon. So I'm just listening to the beat and then placing it correctly. So of course this shouldn't go for so long ideally after about one two three four clips it's time for the rest to just come in uh, as they follow each other so that it's not so predictable so let me play it back for the last time also on the clips which will be following each other just make sure to have a cross dissolve so that they smoothly ch change from one to the other yeah so something like that i hope you've learned something from that one for the third effect that i'll be showing you is how to create a white flash transition it's really good when used well in this example i'll show you how to use a bright flash so typically when you have two clips next to each other like the ones which we just used right now and then what you can do you can bring in an adjustment layer so just make sure to you in your project bin create that adjustment layer and then i'll bring that adjustment layer right here five frames on each side so this side it will come five frames hold shift and the right arrow key to the left and to the right and then cut the excess so with that i'll now go to my effects bin and look for brightness and contrast and put it right here go to the effect controls and then right at the middle of this layer make sure to add the keyframes for brightness and right at the middle make sure it at maximum that is a hundred and then where it starts make sure it starts at zero 
and in the end it goes back to zero okay you can see that's a subtle white flash really effective and simple to do if you don't feel like it's enough you can duplicate this effect right here hit ctrl c and then ctrl v now with the second effect yeah it's really it's really straight to the point for the fourth effect that i'll be showing you is how to make a zoom blur transition so i have these four clips right here so i'll try to transition between the four of them using a good a simple zoom transition right at the middle of the two clips just hold shift go to the right twice to cover 10 frames and also on the other side 10 frames right now we are not working with five frames but 10 frames instead then you can nest them okay then under this nest just go to your effects and then you can look for the transform effect it should be right under distort and then let's go to the effect controls you're going to scale in okay so we'll start at 100 and then right at the middle 5 10 10 frames you're going to zoom in around that much and then on the other side we shall get it back to 100 this is very subtle and uh, it's not easy for someone to notice unless they really have a good eye now the transition doesn't end there we need to have some blur what you'll do just disable this use composition shutter angle and then let's set our own shutter angle let's put around 180 degrees it will give us some blur so for these other two clips right beside we shall do the same thing that we just did go into the middle hold shift go back 10 frames and also from the middle go again 10 frames on this other side highlight on both clips then you can nest them and then after nesting just get the transform effect place it right there add properties for scaling and add the keyframe and then right in the middle right at the middle make it around 400 so that it zooms in a ton and then on this other side reset the parameter then squeeze that keyframe yeah it's a bit better when the keyframes are slightly closer to each other so you can squeeze the position of the keyframes now that they are both inside this nest so let me see if i squeeze them a bit closer near the fifth frame let's see yeah the fifth effect that i want to show you is how to do a speed ramp so hypothetically we have a bit here it's the same bit which we've been using and i have good b-roll footage of a lady here ideally whenever you're working with trap bits or even drill bits you want to transition between scenes a bit faster so that's where speed ramping comes in so let's say we have this clip and let me also play this okay Okay, so right here it goes on slow motion okay now let's see what you can do i'll just increase this area and then right click under here and then enable keyframes for speed ramping now we shall let it start and then around right here we shall hold control and click and then we shall increase the speed of the clip nearly 200 so let's look at it yeah so i'll make sure the speed goes a bit higher nearly 300 and then and then right bit right as it hits this bit right here on this audio i'll get it back to slow motion so i'll i'm holding control and clicking here to add a keyframe and then I will squeeze this arrow so that it goes the speed goes down so it indicates we are going now i won't go to 100 i'll actually go to around 60 so that it's even slower it goes from a high speed to a slow speed so this is how speed ramping really works with bits and then from right here I can add another keyframe holding control and then clicking and then we can raise it back again uh, we were at 300 so let's look so this video really changes a lot let me duplicate it from this one i'll right click and then let's remove effects so this is what i wanted to show you the clip changes from looking like this i'll hide the one which you've already worked on this portion of the video changes from looking like this to looking like this
now you can see uh, how speed ramping really affects the video now i'll put this into better context using uh, other other clips so let's say we have these two clips joining each other you can just cut it you can just cut it maybe up to here and maybe the other video you can also cut it up to there and then for these two clips you can right click on them and then you can increase the speed just make it about 300 and then also tick this ripple edit so that they follow each other now that's an easier way to do that speed ramp between two clips so for this clip i'll just bring the other one and then i'll make a cut right here and make a cut right here highlight on both of them right click speed and duration give it the the amount of speed which you want it to be increased by and also ripple edit it yeah so that's a really effective way of using of incorporating speed ramps into your video edits now for the sixth effect which i want to show you is how to add an artificial camera shake it's really effective in real videos now when we are adding camera shakes uh, a, a really important tip is just to make a duplicate first so we are going to add camera shake on this clip and how i want us to do it i want us to duplicate this clip first then place the duplicate right beneath and then on the video which is right above just go to your effects and look for a camera shake. Premiere Pro doesn't provide an inbuilt camera shake. So I'll use a, you can use from the plugins, a red giant or a sapphire shake. I really enjoy the red giant camera shake. Just place it on top and then go to the camera, go to the effect controls. And then now you can increase uh, the parameters for the camera shake. Yeah, you can see once I increase the frequency from one to seven, this is what it does. So what I'll do, I'll take my razor tool and then right to where I can see the bits, that's where I will cut the video. And then I will also cut it here. And then I just come here and delete what I don't need. So let's play with the audio. Yeah, you can see it really shakes very well. So if you want it to run for longer, you can do that and you can make it longer if you want to. And then right here I can see these two bits. I can duplicate it. And then I'll copy the camera shake from these other two clips so that I don't have to set up everything. And then just do the cut. And then for this portion, I let it run for the entire period. And you can do the same for this clip too. Add the shake here. Copy and paste it. And then just come around cutting and cutting so here are the basic shakes which you've added yeah that's it i hope you really understood how to go around it now going on to our seventh effect which is really dope for trap music is how to add freeze frames now freeze frame is kind of easy but if you're new to it let me just show you so let's say we have these two clips they are on the same video layer and they follow each other like this just go on the first frame and then you can duplicate hold alt while dragging up and then while here you can right click and then click on add frame hold so this entire layer will have the frame hold but the one which is beneath doesn't have so i'll undo that and then we need to add a mask around this artist so just go to your effect controls and grab your pen tool i have several tutorials showing how to use the masking tool so just check the pen tool go to full screen and then let's make a quick mask around the artist you can also always zoom in if you want but since this is a quick mask i won't put a lot of effort So I'll hide this layer beneath so that you can see what you've done. So practically we've chosen this part of the artist. I would go ahead and remove this part of the ground but I think it looks dope. I'll drag this part over here and then cut the excess. You can adjust properties for feathering if you want to but I feel like it's better so it will just go on like this. Yeah. And there's a bunch of stuff which you can do with your freeze frames. You can add an effect. Let's say it's a change color.
you can just play around with it click on your on your character and then you can you can play around with these values so let's say it's like that the video can just join in like this while it goes on now with a freeze frame you can really do a lot with it you can also add keyframes for it like let's say we can add a keyframe for position and then make sure at the end this is the final state so in the beginning you can actually adjust it you can have it start from right beneath then push that keyframe here so now if we play this video it will run like this that is really smooth and in the same way you can add a bunch of layers so i will duplicate that and then you can mess with the timing so for this second one you can have this keyframe come a bit later yeah so you have like two clones coming up and then they join and it goes on so there's a bunch of stuff you can really experiment with a freeze frame now for the last effect that I want to show you, it's how to zoom into a watch, a chain, or maybe a car headlight, something like that. I'll actually do the same on this video. Duplicate your first clip, which is this clip. And then at the end of it, we need to take a frame hold of this car. With the player right here, I'll right click and then I will add a frame hold. So that frame hold will apply on this second one. So we'll delete that one. Since it will be a still frame hold now, the video runs from here. To here and then while it's at this point the other video which is right beneath just keeps on playing but what you want to do you want to make a mask around this car let's add a mask using the pen tool and large here and let's make it around this globe okay so if i hide this layer here if i hide it you can see we've selected that part only but if we come back here and invert that mask, we can have the video showing beneath. So if I enable this clip, the other video keeps on playing right here. So you can adjust the mask however you want and however you find it fit. Actually, let's go around this full glass. Okay, so that's a rough mask, okay? We'll increase the feathering a lot and then we shall also work with the expansion so that it goes... A bit inside now the next step after we've established a mask and we've already configured the feathering and everything we need to come and adjust the anchor point the perspective from which a video zooms in so like right now this video when I increase the scaling it zooms in relative to the middle part so that's not what we need we need it to zoom in relative to this part I'll click on the anchor point and you will immediately find this icon just move it centrally of where you want it now you can add keyframes for scaling and then let's scale all the way in so up to about 1500 so let's play it back you can use the same technique to zoom into chains watches doors and all that if you want a specific tutorial which goes in depth about that and which we work on adobe after effects i will link it down below make sure to check it out it's a very comprehensive guide yeah so that's it if you made it till the end of this video thank you so much for watching if you did enjoy watching this video kindly give it a thumbs up as it will help with recommending this video to other people with the same interest as you in case you have any comment inquiry or suggestion you'd like to add on to this video kindly leave it on the comment box and i'm happy to interact with you guys see you in the next video cheers